If you go to Japan, you'll notice vending machines stocked with bottles of tea that are cold in the summer and warm in the winter. You'll also see green tea flavored ice creams, desserts, and snacks. And you may even get to take part in entire ceremonies dedicated to green tea. You might get to see small tea farmers that have spent generations perfecting the best way to grow, produce, and serve tea. To an outsider, this might seem like an obsession, but there's actually a very reasonable explanation for all of these. One that will take us throughout history, geography, and engineering. During our travels around Japan, we even developed our own tea obsession, as we met with dozens of tea farmers in order to find the very best Japanese green tea for Neo teas. But what makes this tea so special compared to your typical tea bag? If all you've ever experienced is a tea bag from a grocery store, it may seem a bit odd to be obsessed with tea. These tea bags are a way to disguise lower quality tea, often made from discarded or crushed up tea leaves. The color they produce is brown and the flavor is flat and bitter. In premium Japanese green tea, you see a deep jade green or yellow color and a more vibrant and complex flavor. This is certainly a drink worthy of an obsession and 98% of tea produced in Japan is consumed in Japan rather than being exported abroad. There's a ton of pride around the tea industry in Japan and for good reason. A lot of time and effort goes into producing these teas and small farmers in the Japanese countryside like Mr. Sakamoto have developed methods to achieve the perfect balance of flavor. The premium teas he produces like the Gyokuro Cha Meijin likely taste unlike anything you've had before with a rich, sweet, and savory flavor and no bitterness. Even the more common teas like Sencha produced by farmers in Shizuoka are produced with painstaking detail. The tea fields are organized into neat rows and they even have fans blowing on them to protect them from the frost in the winter time. But where did this obsession with quality come from? In medieval Japan, there would be tea competitions or tocha where competitors would have to guess the region a tea was produced in. Was it produced in the famed region of Togano or was it grown elsewhere in Japan? Uji was known for producing the second best tea in Japan in the 1300s, but the farmers here would soon displace their rivals in Togano due to the improvements in cultivation of their tea. One major innovation was the shading of the tea plants. Farmers in Uji found that if the tea plants were cut off from sunlight, they would produce a sweeter flavor and less bitterness. This is where the story gets interesting, as farmers began experimenting with all sorts of different ways to make their tea just a little bit better. They found that by steaming the leaves and rolling them, they could lock in the flavor for longer, and this led to the invention of sencha tea. They also found that by shading the tea leaves for an extremely long time, they could produce a tea that was incredibly sweet and rich in flavor. It even produced a green residue during the production process, earning it the name gyokuro, or jade dew. Later, the farmers also found that they could roast the tea leaves, and they would take on a pleasant flavor more similar to coffee, and this became known as hojicha. These tea types became even more diverse during the 19th and 20th century because of two main factors. The first was the mechanization of the tea production process, and the second was the geographic and political isolation of Japan. The fukumushi, or deep steaming process, emerged as a way to produce larger quantities of great tasting tea, so the country didn't need to import anything. This involved the steaming of tea leaves for a longer time, and during this longer steaming process, the leaves were broken down, allowing more to flow into the cup. These fukumushi teas have a stronger green color, a smoother flavor, and if they're done right, they can even take on a sweet and fruity taste profile, like the Yamaga no Sato. As you can see, this competition, or as some may say, obsession, with producing the best possible tea is nothing new. In fact, it's centuries old. So before we get into the modern day and discuss the green tea vending machines and green tea ice cream, let's talk about the tea ceremony. You see, at the same time the farmers were obsessing over producing the best tea, there were also people obsessing over preparing the best tea, specifically the tea masters in the Japanese tea ceremony. During this tea ceremony, a bowl of maja tea is prepared for the guest through a strict adherence to the rules and principles laid forth by Sen no Rikyu in the late 16th century. There are rules about how to clean the utensils, how to hold the utensils, and of course how to whisk the matcha tea. There are even schools where people study to become tea masters and practice the perfect tea ceremony etiquette. Again, to an outsider, this may seem like an obsession, but there is actually a reason for it. The purpose of all these rules and utensils is to uphold the four principles of the tea ceremony. Wa, ke, se, jaku, or harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility. You can see harmony in the design of the tea room and how it fits in with nature. You can see respect in the offerings made to the guest and the silence paid by the guest to the tea master as she prepares the bowl of tea. Purity is exemplified in the careful purification of the tea utensils, as well as the purification of the guest's hands before entering the tea room. Finally, tranquility can be achieved only when the other three principles have also been embraced. 
So this can almost be seen as a type of moving meditation, a strict adherence to rules in order to achieve a larger outcome. This tea ceremony fosters a strong bond between the host and their guest, as two equals enjoying a bowl of tea in silence. So now that we've explained a bit about tea history, let's jump back into the modern day and talk about those tea vending machines. With 5.2 million vending machines in Japan, it seems there is one on every single street corner in major cities. You might be used to seeing vending machines in other countries, but what makes these ones unique is that they can dispense cold drinks or hot drinks, depending on the time of year. It's also not uncommon for unsweetened green tea to outsell sugary sodas and soft drinks, which is a sign that tea culture is still alive and well in Japan. Although these drinks are convenient and they make tea accessible to everyone, they miss out on a lot of the quality you get from small batch green teas, so many choose to brew their own tea at home in a Kyusu teapot. Finally, if you go to Japan, you will also notice a lot of different green tea flavored treats that are hard to find elsewhere. This is because the most iconic tea in Japan, matcha, which is used in the Japanese tea ceremony, comes in a powdered form. This means that it can be mixed into just about anything, including ice cream, pastries, and more. If you want, you can even make your own matcha recipes at home. Just make sure you use the latte grade matcha, as this is still great quality, but it's much more affordable. So is there an obsession with green tea in Japan? It's more like a deep connection or dedication that has lasted for centuries and continues to this day. During our travels around Japan, we've met so many talented people that are committed to producing the best tea, and we like to share their passion with people all around the world. If you'd like to try some of this tea, please head to neoteas.com and explore some of the best teas we found after years of searching around Japan. It's a great way to experience generations of dedication in a single cup and help us to support the farmers we work with so that we can keep their traditions alive. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button so you can see more tea videos in the future. Until then, we'll see you next time.